Welcome to Galcom's Mission Compass podcast. To learn more about Galcom and our guests today, visit galcom.org. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus commissions his disciples with a worldwide missionary assignment. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Evangelism was the final instruction from Jesus to his followers. Today, generations later, the Great Commission remains the greatest calling of Christians to a lost world. Welcome to Mission Compass, your guide to the Great Commission, presented by Galcom International. On today's Mission Compass, we invite you to engage with us in fulfilling the Great Commission as we talk with mission workers about what God is doing through them as they share the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Hello, friend, and welcome to another edition of Mission Compass, presented by Galcom International. I'm Ron Harris. Our host for Mission Compass is Tim Whitehead. And Tim, I know you have a special guest on our program today. That is correct, Ron. From New Life Prison Ministry, we have their director, Nadia Zaverzenik, with us. Thank you, Tim. Well, each week here on Mission Compass, we have encouraging reports from around the world, challenges from God's Word, and testimonies from people who are using their unique skills and gifts to make an impact in their community. You can learn more about Galcom International and how you can partner with us. Just look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, or you can visit our website at galcom.org. Well, thank you, Ron. One of my favorite partnerships, and it's been growing over the last several years, is with New Life Prison Ministry right here in Canada. And so I love to check in every once in a while to find out how things are going. And in fact, just a little while ago, Nadia Zverzenik, their executive director, contacted us and said, we need a thousand more ARCs, Audio Recordings for Christ devices. And so I thought, hey, Nadia, we got to talk, find out what's going on, what's God doing through the ministry there. So Nadia, great to have you here on the Mission Compass. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to give you guys an update. Well, before we get the update, probably for our new listeners, we've added some stations. Better give us kind of the elevator speech. What is New Life Prison Ministry all about? Yeah, so New Life Prison Ministries uh, provides uh, transformation and hope to inmates across Canada. We're nationwide. We do this through our Bible correspondence courses, and we present the gospel to people who have never heard it or who are really struggling, obviously in the criminal system for a reason. And our concept is doing it through a Bible correspondence course and partnering them with a mentor on the outside that they can provide feedback from and get marks from, and also these beautiful letter exchanges between the mentor and the inmate, which we call students. Um, We serve about 2000 students across Canada right now and are growing every month. And so uh, we're so thankful that God keeps growing our reach in the prison systems. Great. I got a whole bunch of questions already, but I remember <laughs> the first time I think with your, talking to your predecessor about the prison ministry. Mm-hmm. And I never forget this. She said, you got to remember Moses was a murderer. David had a guy killed and he was an adulterer. We have these people. Uh, Paul was a terrorist. That's right. We have these people that we stereotypically say, okay, they're an inmate, they're bad, they can't be helped. But then God has this incredible redemptive power. Absolutely. Yeah. Lately, have you seen somebody coming out through your ministry and, and just, you, you're like, I never would have known that that guy had ever done anything wrong. Oh my goodness. Um, every day. Wow. Like the, I've only been in the ministry now uh, for about a year and a half. And I felt called to be a part of this ministry uh, right in the midst of the pandemic. And I thought, I don't know how God is going to use me, but please just transform my own heart in a way to see the goodness in people that I would never have considered seeing the goodness in in the past, just to be honest. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what I am feeling and what I'm sensing the Holy Spirit doing in me is this expansion of my view of the kingdom and what that means. And I see alive and well how God uses every story for his glory when someone allows them to. We see people I just received a letter yesterday, actually, from uh, an inmate 
turned student and now is a leader in the prison system leading Bible studies, and he is serving a life sentence. Yeah. We don't really know what our students have done. We we tend to not look it up because it's probably for the best that we don't know. Um, it, you know, it can get really scary at times to look up their crime because then you automatically have this pre-screening process of what that person is all about. And so we tend to not look up uh, anything, but we do know when someone is serving a life sentence in Canada, that is a pretty hefty crime. And so there's very few things that can land you into the system for life. And so this gentleman, you know, has been in the system already 17 years. Uh, his name's Peter, gave his life to Christ two years ago and is now hosting Bible studies. And so you think to yourself, God can use anything like, and I get stories like that week after week after week, daily sometimes of somebody who thought that they were a nothing, mm -hmm. thought that they were really just the bottom of society. And then God comes in with his beautiful gospel message, the redemption of Jesus, and they are transformed. And how else can you explain it? Year after year, I hear that rehabilitation programs don't work. And I would say without Jesus, they don't, you know, that we are not a rehabilitative society. We tend to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. But we can say, quite frankly, that a new life students have a lower recidivism rate. Uh, people who meet Jesus in prison generally do their best to stay out. Now, that doesn't happen all the time. We see them come back. But we are seeing a better success rate. And most chaplains would agree with that statement. We are seeing people who really want transformation, get connected with a local church and make a difference in their lives. So, oh, those stories too, they, I need you to know that the Bible stories about prison inspire our inmates and students all the time. Really? They, they like, are you kidding me? The Bible is filled with people who went to prison for murder and all of these really terrible things. So like I could be transformed like that person was transformed and I'm like yes you can be <laughs> definitely and it's so inspiring to see them feel connected to scripture that way That's this sure. is important for us um I was about to say suit and tie but I think I'm the only guy in my church that wears a suit and tie <laughs> but all this clean cut good Christian people yeah and we we as you said we're not a rehabilitative society we we lock our problems away and That's then right. we count those people this is so encouraging for all of us that need hope, that all of us that are caught in sin, God is going to redeem us. God, and not only just redeem us and, and heal us, but that testimony of Peter becoming now a Bible study leader. Right. You know? right. Where does that happen in our local church? I mean, I'm sure if you <laughs> dug deep, you'd find transformation stories. But to the depth of being on your knees, sitting in a, in a prison cell, knowing that you'll never have what society would label as freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that Peter has freedom in a different format, spiritual freedom. Um, but now he's being used by God to bring others to, to salvation. Like when you hear that, you can only point to, to Christ as the reason for that. There is no one that can tell me that you'd be having a good day in prison, but you know, Peter <laughs> is leading a Bible study on our anger course for six guys who need help with anger. And of course he's pointing them to Jesus as the answer. And it's just overwhelming when you think about it. Yeah. Hey, so we got this great story and we want to see it happen more and more again. We want these guys to be rehabilitated. We want them to have God's touch on their life to, to receive the forgiveness of sins and the hope mm -hmm. of heaven. You said you have 2000 students Yes. and it's growing. What limits your growth? Yeah, well, of course, with every nonprofit, uh, the limiting factor is always funding. It does cost quite a bit of money to send in Bible studies every, you know, every day we send in thousands of Bible studies monthly, and that is expensive. We have to print them. We have to pay for them. We have to ship them. Uh, our mail costs yearly are about $80,000. So that is not a small amount of money. And we are not able to just email into the system. Everything is an antiquated original Canada Post mail system. And uh, we have to take our precautions when we receive the mail and when we send it back in, uh, there can be nothing going into the system that could be dangerous, that could be triggering. And so that, that process is quite antiquated and quite expensive. And so obviously funding. Uh, the other thing is we are moving into a multi-faith uh, society, as we all know, you know, Christianity is not on the rise in North America, particularly in Canada. Our government is encouraging a multi-faith system, which has its 
as positives. We do have a seat at the table as Christians to talk about who Jesus is. Uh, however, our chaplains are our resource. Our chaplains are the people that bring the Bible study to the inmate. And so we are doing our best to strengthen our relationship with chaplains that are strong Christian leaders on the front lines. And so I ask, I always ask my partners to pray for chaplains who are strong Christians and we need those we need those frontline workers to be strong in their faith, but not only that, but not burn out. And so that is a very limiting factor for us. And the only combat to that is prayer. But other than that, we are growing through the pandemic. Our little antiquated mail system was the only thing that got in and out. And so I want to say huh. praise to God. We are growing and our need is growing. And so uh, last month, actually last week, we processed more Bible studies than we've processed in the last three years on a weekly basis, 452 Bible studies. Awesome. We normally process like 250. For us, that is a massive growth. We are so excited to see God moving um, and growing our student student base. So we have 2000 students, but that is like an in and out number. And so, you know, every year we process 13, 14,000 Bible studies. You mentioned mentors. Do you have enough mentors? At the, at the moment, we're actually on the search for more mentors because we're growing. And yeah. so we have 190 mentors right now. And uh, that has doubled since COVID started. Excellent. We're really thankful. Uh, God has provided volunteers that can work right from their home. People were looking for a space to volunteer where they didn't have to leave their home so that they would be safe. And uh uh, we gained so many volunteers and we're so thankful, but we're looking for more because <laughs> we're growing. So if anybody's interested, please connect with me. I would, I would love that. Very yeah. good. Let's quick add nlpm.ca, New Life Prison Ministries. So nlpm.ca is a place to take a quick look. We're going to take a quick break. i um, be right back with Nadia Zverznik right after this. So don't go away. Have you heard it said, people don't care about what you know? They want to know how much you care. I'm Bonnie Sala with Reset. When he was a missionary in India, Doug Nichols contracted tuberculosis and was sent to a sanitarium. There, Doug tried to talk to some of the patients about following Jesus, but the patients wanted nothing to do with him or his God. Doug began to wonder why God had allowed him to be there anyway. Early one morning, Doug noticed an old man trying to sit up, but falling back because of weakness. Exhausted, the old man finally lay still and sobbed. The scene was repeated the next day. A stench began to permeate the ward. The old man had been unsuccessfully trying to get up and go to a restroom. The nurses were extremely agitated over the mess, Doug said. One slapped the man in anger. The embarrassed man curled up into a ball and wept. Early the next morning, Doug rose and gently carried the man to the restroom. Speaking in his native tongue, the man thanked Doug profusely and then gently kissed him on the cheek. Later that day, Doug awakened to a steaming cup of tea served to him by another patient. That man made motions indicating that he wanted one of the Gospel of John booklets Doug had. Throughout the day, says Doug, people came to me asking for the gospel booklets. This included the nurses and doctors until everyone in the hospital had a booklet. Over the next few days, several decided they wanted to follow Doug's Jesus. Yes, when people know you really care for them, then they want to know your Jesus. I'm Bonnie Sala with Reset. To hear this again, read or share this, or to find more resources like this, visit guidelines.org. You may be listening to us on your computer, but you can also find us on your smartphone using Spotify, iTunes, or other streaming platforms. Just go to galcom.org and choose your favorite. Make sure to subscribe, follow, and share our podcast. Welcome back to the Mission Compass. I'm your host, Tim Whitehead. Our special guest this week, Executive Director of New Life Prison Ministry Canada, Nadia Zverznik. Nadia, I got to tell you, when you think about prison ministries, it's it's dark, it's heavy, lots of problems and baggage. I got to tell you, this conversation has been really encouraging and uplifting. <laughs> I mean, it's been all laughs and smiles and 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 good news. Um, yeah. It, you know, even COVID didn't bring you guys down. It actually increased your ministry. It grew us, yes. So yeah. let's talk, what is the what is the vision for the future? What's the goal for the future? 
how do you get more students? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for asking, because as a new executive director, of course, um, I hope my excitement comes through because I do have big plans for this ministry. Uh, It's a 43-year-old ministry who's uh, really had an impact, but I think we can have more of an impact. We have uh, some serious issues with literacy rates in our prison system. The the literacy rate right now is about a grade four to eight level, and we're probably being generous. And that means that uh, inmates who are about average age 26 are really struggling to comprehend our Bible studies. And so we have to be innovative. We have to come up with new and different ways to provide Bible study in a way that's relevant to that age group that meets the literacy rate needs, but also still stays true to our mission, which is providing transformation and hope through scripture. And so the ARC device that you mentioned earlier is one of those innovative tools. We are hoping to continue growing in that area. And we know that the Canadian government has lots of security, you know, stipulations and risks, but God has been really good to us. And we've been able to provide yearly, annually, about 1,500 of those. And that number actually, as you mentioned earlier, is growing for us. So that's one of the innovative ways that I would like to grow. We would like to expand the reach of our ARC device revamp it eventually in the future by creating content for it that is interactive in nature with maybe some worksheets that the inmate can send us and still have that mentorship relationship. For those of you that don't know this ARC device, it does provide a mental wellness tool for chaplains and security guards. It allows the inmate to stay in a lockdown setting, which is what's been happening for the last few years in prisons with something to not just entertain them, but to calm them, to bring down anger, to bring down depression, and to really take a moment for them to breathe. Some grounding exercises are on there, but mostly the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so we have a, we have a very, uh, we have an audience that's willing to listen because there's, they're in security or lockdown 20 out of 24 hours. And so we want to take advantage of that. I know that that sounds terrible because who wants to be locked down for 20 out of 24 hours in a day, but security guards are listening to the ARC. Leadership are listening to the ARC. Chaplains are using the ARC in different ways than ever before. And so my passion, as you can see here in my voice, is to grow that ministry, to really allow us to use it in a way that is effective and that gets into more prisons. And I think as we grow, the security risk will diminish because people will see the benefit of it. So now you have a great video on your website of an inmate by the name of John, or sorry, a student by the name of Jonathan. Yes. And he says some of those things you said, it's, he talks about it being his companion. He talks about it, yes. you know, lifting him up and, and he would listen to that. And, and I think he makes a comment about having listened to the new Testament, something like like dozens and dozens of times, I thought that's wow, right. more than what I have. But yes. just the, the importance of this companionship that that the ark provides as someone is bringing them through the Bible, and and there's I know you have your lessons on it. You've got some sermons yes. on there, the audio Bible. What a yeah, and that's why we're so happy that we can do something to, to come alongside you as a ministry. So so what else as far as the growth? We talk about the ark. Yeah. So the next, uh, we've done two brand new projects throughout COVID, which we're excited about. We've piloted a project with Chaplain Frank Liu, who is our chaplain to the chaplains in the Ontario region. And he's starting to do some video uh, delivery of Bible studies. And so we actually put one of our Bible studies called Grief. Many inmates struggle with losing a family member when they're in. I think that they said 70 to 80%. Uh, lose a family member while they're in the system and they can't go to the funeral. And so that grief study is one of our most popular studies for chaplains to hand out. We've put that into a video format and now it's being delivered uh, in a way that people can watch it, learn uh, what God says about grief and how he's willing to walk alongside you. And it's just a new delivery model. We're really excited. It launched July 15th. And we are so thankful to hear that Frank would like three more of those studies done. And so that's another way to expand our reach. And then the third one is we're working with it on with an Indigenous committee. We really want to create a path for reconciliation for our Indigenous brothers and sisters in the system. About 40% of the Canadian inmate population is Indigenous. And with the recent, you know, media news about the residential school system and you know, the crisis that really has happened in our nation with regards to reconciliation with our brothers and sisters in Christ, with regards to the Indigenous culture, we felt a real call for us to support them in 
um, reconciling with the Christian family. And so we're working really hard to create Indigenous studies. Um, the ARC is very useful for our Indigenous brothers and sisters. They use it more often than not because their literacy rates are even lower. Yeah. And so we're hoping that we can actually find, and if anybody knows one, please send them to me, an Indigenous author to create studies that really attack the concept of reconciliation and how we can support them. And so we're hoping to have that program launched by 2024. So lots of new and exciting things for us to do. Fantastic. The stigma of a prison ministry, again, this clean cut Christian, you know, mentality where we're okay. There's something wrong with them. Uh, as, as an accountant, I had to do these um, professional development courses. And I did one on ethics a little while ago. And a guy was talking about fraud. And I think he was a forensic accountant that would, would find people out. And he said, there's only 5% of fraud, so crime, that are committed by people that are kind of pathological, evil people. Like there's something that they just, they got to, it says 95% of crime is committed by someone in a desperate situation. Yes. But they're, otherwise, you, they were nice people. Bad things happened. They reacted poorly. They, they didn't have the tools to manage things. And we got to have a little more humanity and grace. Mm -hmm and compassion towards people that have found themselves in prison. Absolutely. Your point about grief really touched me there. They're normal people. Absolutely. That have normal emotions and they need help. So yes. friends, I, I encourage you nlpm.ca, get in touch with Nadia, find out how you can help. Actually really quick. We got about two, three minutes left. Are there qualifications for your mentors? What, yeah. what, what kind of people do you need? Yeah, so we're looking for people who have really good biblical wisdom. Um, you don't need to know it all, but you need to be willing to search it all, is what I always say to people. Um, you have to understand scripture and be willing to do some research. And we often find that most of our instructors or mentors say, wow, I've learned a lot <laughs> about the questions that I'm being asked, because what we get are really tough questions. You know, why do good, bad things happen to good people? Why, uh, why did God choose David after he had committed such a sin? Those are really deep questions. We get questions about the Trinity. And so while you may not understand 100% how to answer right away, you need to be willing to investigate. So you have to have that mind of, I'm going to search for the answer and I'm going to ask a lot of questions. The other thing is you really need to be able to know that there's an influx of time commitment. So one week you might receive four students responses and then the next week, nothing. And so you need to be willing to be a little bit flexible with your schedule. The process of receiving mail is slow. And as I said, antiquated. And so sometimes we receive it quickly and other times it takes four weeks. And so we just need to be, you need to be willing to be patient with regards to that. But other than that, we really want you to, if you have a passion for teaching people, mentoring people, walking along alongside somebody who's really about to transform, we want you, please connect with us for sure. Your, your typical volunteer would be what age, what gender, what yeah. background? What, yeah, what our you? average age is is a is what I like to call seasoned. So <laughs> between 60 and 65. And the reason that is is because they have that flexibility, they have that biblical wisdom, but we also have been lately bringing on a little bit of a younger volunteer and when I say younger, I say, you know, around 40 to 50, you know, like my age. <laughs> Uh, and those are people that uh, maybe work from home now because of COVID and they have a bit more flexibility and they have this real desire to see transformation like right in front of them. And so we've been gifted with lots of different age groups, but our average age is about 60, 65. I, I wanted to ask that because I know a lot of our listeners are probably yeah. in that age group and probably said, ah, what can I do? This is what you can do. We absolutely all have a part to play in the Great Commission New yes. Life Prison Ministry, nlpm.ca. Take a look at it. Contact them today. Nadia, I am so encouraged. I'm so glad we connected today to share what God is Thank doing you. through the ministry. Friends, come alongside, volunteer there. Help us get more ARCs, ARCs, Audio Recordings for Christ, into the prisons. Encouraging, mentoring, helping, healing our friends, brothers that have fallen on bad times and need that hope of redemption. Nadia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your partnership and your commitment to this. It really means a lot to us to partner with you. You're a great ministry and we love partnering with you. So thank you so much. Well, friend, we're at the end of our program today. You've been listening to Galcom's Mission Compass, your guide to the Great Commission. There are many ways to partner with us. 
To find out more, visit our website at galcom.org. That's galcom, spelled G-A-L-C-O-M dot org. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. I'm Ron Harris. Thanks for joining us today on Mission Compass, a radio ministry of Galcom International.